Okie dokie. In this problem, they give us a function representing the population of anchovy. And in general, it's always just like population of different fish. Uh, so they say t is time and days. What is the percentage of the number of anchovy at day zero that remain over the long run? What this means is we want to first find the population at day zero and then find the population over the long run. What does that mean? Over the long run sort of means if we evaluate the population as t is approaching infinity, what does the population equal in the long run, in the end, or as t goes to infinity? And so we'd find the population at day zero, population at infinity, and then actually divide the population at infinity by the population at zero. And that sort of gives you the percentage of fish that were at day zero that are remaining over the long run. And I'll talk through kind of a long way to do this, or, you know, this is the long way. I'll talk through this method, and then I'll sort of talk through a shortcut, which we will use to evaluate the next two once we're done with this one. So when we evaluate this function as t goes to infinity, we will have on the bottom 1 minus 0.49e to the negative 1.91 times infinity. So what we're going to do is sort of break down what's happening with this. If we have e to the negative 1.91 times infinity, the infinity sort of swallows this number here, right? So it just becomes negative infinity in the exponent. Now let's discuss what is e to the negative infinity equivalent to. If we rewrite it without any negative exponents, we get 1 over e to the positive infinity. e raised to a very, very large number is just a very, very large number, infinity. 1 divided by infinity is approaching 0. 1 over 100 is a small decimal. 1 over 1,000, even smaller decimal. And this idea extends to 1 to the infinity. So you could plug in to your calculator like 1 divided by 99999 or something and you'd get something very close to 0. So that's the idea here. So what is this saying? This says that e to the negative infinity equals 0. So we'll really just replace this e to the negative infinity with 0. But if we have 0.49 times 0, then really all of this goes to 0. And all we have left is 5100 divided by 1 for the evaluation uh, as p goes to infinity. If we plug in 0, let's talk about what happens. So we have 5100. We have 1 minus 0.49 e to the 1 point, the negative 1.91 times 0. But then the exponent, that is times 0, just becomes 0, e to the 0 is 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. So what we're left with is 1 minus 0.49 in the bottom. So if we were to simplify this a little bit, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. And naturally, we can cancel the 5100s, and all we're left with is 1 minus 0.49 divided by 1, so we should get 0.51 or 51% for this answer. And that's basically it. That's the long version. Let's talk shortcuts. So ultimately, where did our answer come from? Once we simplified everything, it came from just 1 minus 0.49 divided by 1. So if we break that down, when we are given this function, there's always two numbers in the bottom. One is attached to the e term, and the other is not. And so what we do is perform the operation between those two numbers that, you know, uh, is presented. Sometimes it's subtraction, sometimes it's addition. Uh, so we'll do 1 minus 0.49, and then we'll divide by the number that's not attached to the e term. So 1. And ultimately, that's what we calculated down here. So again, if we apply it here, we identify the two numbers in the bottom, perform the operation between them that is presented, in this case addition, 0.96 plus 3, and then we divide by the number that's not attached to the e term. We have 3.96 divided by 3. 
and we get 1.32. 1.32 as a percentage is 132. And that's it. So let's do just one more example real quick. Again, numbers in the bottom. Go ahead and subtract them like they say. And then divide by the number not attached to the E term. So 4. 4 minus 2.44 divided by 4. We get 0.39 or 39%. And that's all there is to it. Hope this shortcut helps. If you have any questions on the shortcut or even the long way and evaluating the population function as t goes to infinity or as it goes to zero, please let me know. Happy to help regardless of which method you'd like to take to approach it. All right. Hope this helps.